Hello everybody and welcome back to Nervous Reviews. Today we are going to be reviewing uh, every single book that I've read in 2022. Um, I, I do realize that I've made very few reviews, uh, video reviews over the past year, but uh, truth be told, I have been reading a lot of books and the reason I haven't been making reviews is because I don't have time to make reviews, I just read the books. But hopefully I should be able to go over everything today and if you don't know, you can also go to my Goodreads and see every review I've done there. But here I can do it all on video and tell you exactly what I think of every single book that I've read this year. So if you do want to go see every single book that I've reviewed, uh, you can take a look over here. If I, uh, I'll, I'll move this around. Is this good? Okay, well, that's all the books, so I'll just move it up to here. Uh, that'll be fine. Yeah, so this is every single book that I've read um, that I want to review because I'll, this is mostly fantasy and at least somewhat relevant to this channel. I've made a review about most of these books or it's an important book or it's a book that I've you know, want to review, but I'm not going to review or something like that. And if you do want to go and see every single book I've read this year, you can go take a look over here. Um, it's a 2022 reading challenge. I don't know if any of you uh, use this, but um, I always find it interesting because I'm, I usually miss out like 2021. I missed, I completely missed out. And this year, even after audiobooks, I managed to read this amount. Somehow I read 38 books in uh, 2020. I can't believe that. But this year I felt pretty good about reading 26. That was a baffling achievement. I've never I uh, would have thought that I read that many. It's been a long time since I've read this many books, so huge, huge benefit. There's many books that I haven't reviewed and I don't intend to review, and I'm not going to talk about in this video. Uh, for example, The 4-Hour Workweek or, you know, these these random, like, weird books that are audiobooks that are, like, lectures on history. Click the first one, 1984. I've never, I'm not sure if I did a review of 1984 on this channel or not. But either way, big fan. Uh, quite good, actually. I found it, like, not even... I expected it to be more boring than it was. And I'm surprised that a classic, a classic still holds up to this day in a way that's, it, it's a genuinely good book. You don't often find that, right? A lot of books are really dry. A Brave New World, while brilliant, unbelievably brilliant, I would say better than this actually, in terms of brilliancy, is just so much more boringly written. It, it's so difficult to read. Uh, while this book is not that, it, it's, it's actually quite, um, it's actually quite, easy to read and it was very enjoyable to read so that's why I did read it so that's why I put it up in A. It's also obviously very very smart um, but not life-changingly so so that it avoids the uh, the S tier over there. American Gods. Ooh American Gods. So this I read this in preparation to watch Neil Gaiman and Schenectady um, which is in New York State. You can go watch that video if you haven't already it's on my channel. And during the process I read a couple Neil Gaiman books which maybe hold me nah, okay it was it was a marginal silver lining I'll say that and this book in particular, I, I've been trying to decide between B and C, um, but I would have to go D or C just because um, just because I haven't, I don't really remember what happened. And it's such, like, it's such a smart book. It's such an objectively smart book that I can't, I can't really say it's bad because if for nothing else, I really, really enjoyed the, the beautifulness in which Neil Gaiman portrayed uh, gods in the new world. I thought that was a very, very illustrative and beautiful way of portraying something that's really complex in a way that's like a great style too. Neil Gaiman really nailed it with the style. There's a reason this is the book he's mostly remembered for is because his style fits perfectly with this kind of story. So it kind of makes sense. But other than that, like I didn't really enjoy it too much. I didn't, didn't really make too much sense to me. And the story itself, if you kind of look past the beauty and the style, you look past all that, you look at the story. Did I enjoy the story? Not really. Instead of uh, instead of fairy tale, I'm going to vote for a Neil Gaiman's Anansi Boys, which I, I I didn't finish. I only read about half of it, but I feel like I can review it because it is god awful. It's pretty bad. It's it's one of the worst books that I've read for no reason other than it felt like it felt like Neil Gaiman was going the same route as as American Gods, and in that he, he didn't realize that American Gods only worked because of his style. If it wasn't for his style, American Gods wouldn't have worked. And so he thought, well, we'll say this, if it wasn't for his style, as well as the interesting story that went behind it and the work that went into it, it wouldn't have worked. So if you just get rid of the work and all of this other stuff that's involved with American Gods and you just leave yourself with a Neil Gaiman style, this is exactly what you get. Anansi Boys is just Neil Gaiman style with Neil Gaiman ideas that isn't much more than that. It's really nothing much. So I, I that's why I didn't enjoy it too much. The, the, the story was just so boring. I didn't care at all. Okay, now uh, my favorite review that I've done this year, I really, really, I mean, I really enjoyed the fairy tale review that I did. I thought it was very, very smart and I'm very proud of it to this day. Um, that's why it's been so long and I, I didn't, I didn't want to put something up that didn't top that uh, because I knew that I wouldn't post videos for a while. So that's why it's still up now in my most recent video until this, maybe, or we'll see. 
but I have to once again put this down in D or I have to put it up in C. I'm going to put it up in C because I feel like I feel like this book while it was such a letdown considering the first half. I have to give it something for the first half and I wouldn't recommend this to anyone but I, if I were to recommend this genuinely like I, I don't know how I, this this almost sounds sacrilegious but I would say read up to the point where you know the point or if it was a person I knew then I would tell them the point read up to that point and then just drop it like it's not going to get much better than this it, like it just doesn't at all not at all just skip to the end if you really want to know the ending of the story but otherwise no and because I can do that, at least I can do that, I would give it a C. Whereas Anansi Boys, I wouldn't I wouldn't even say start. I would just recommend that you don't read it. And Beyond Order, wow, this one, um, this one I got a, a little bit of hate for. Um, but you know, it's okay. I don't mind. Um, I'll still put up these videos and I'll still rank it. So this book in particular, I did I did personally feel bored while reading it. And I, I think I portrayed that pretty well in the review that I made. This book was just not was just not super enjoyable for me. The first book, which I actually thought was a fantastic book, was very, very, it sound, it was like very fresh. It was very new. It, it felt very interesting to somebody who hadn't heard much of this before. Even if somebody who's learned a lot from the man himself, from the author himself, that was, um, it was still fresh, even after I'd, I'd learned all that. Whereas this one, it felt like it brought almost no new ideas to the table. That's all I'll say. Okay, and now we get to our first series, uh, if you don't count um, American Gods. Our first series, so I read The Lives of Locke and Laura approximately a year ago, so it's been a while, and the reason I haven't picked up book two is just because I feel like I always have fantasy books to read, and now I finally feel like this is the top of my list. I'm nearly done Dresden, uh, I finished Mistborn, and you know, there's a bunch of books that I've already read, so especially because this was a great audiobook list, and I didn't care too much for it, and so I didn't care if I hated it because of the audiobook, and so I put it on. Book two, I felt like, I personally felt like book two was such a step down, a huge step down from book one. So much so that I would personally, if, I, if I'm talking about myself, I would put it down at a, at a, okay, it would be right in between. It would be a high D or low C. I think I'll give it a low C just because I, I did, there, there are parts of it that I really enjoyed. Um, if I'm going to switch this around, I should move these around. Beyond Order or Fairy Tale. Maybe Beyond Order is worse than Fairy Tale. Or oh, sorry, the other way around. Um, I'll leave this here for now. But American Gods is better. Yeah, okay, so this seems reasonable to me. I found that book one felt so interesting because it focused on one thing. And it was like really a character exploration. And that's what I love. I really love characters in a story. If there's not good characters, there's no point in me reading it. Um, that's one of the reasons Fairy Tale flopped, by the way. I, I was not a fan of that. But otherwise... In terms of uh, Red Seas Under Red Skies, I felt like a big part of the story was taken away by the fact that Locke and Jean had barely had agency over their own story. It felt like their story was basically led. Any two people could have put been put in half the situations and it ended up the same place. It was just kind of a lame story, all things considered. And yes, it, it, was, it wasn't too bad, right? I, I did enjoy it to a certain degree. That's why I put it in C instead of D. Um, it was certainly, without a doubt, way worse than book one. And that was a huge, huge hit in my book. Okay, and then book three, Republic of Thieves. Okay, so this one, in my opinion, was a large difference. It was a huge upgrade from the previous book. Um, in fact, I might even say it's on par or better than the first book. I'm not sure what I said about that. You can look on my Goodreads. Or uh, I can look on my Goodreads because I am i don't care. I, I'll just do this. So let's take a look. This is book three. What did I rate it? I rated it a three star. Fantastic. And what about book one? Book one, a two star. Oh, wow. Okay. So that is true. I did rate it higher than the previous book. Okay. So I did like this book better than the first book. That seems very reasonable. The reason I like this one so much was because it felt like a, a, a great culmination of what was the previous two books. It really did feel like, I wouldn't call it a conclusion, but it felt, it felt like a conclusion. It wasn't a conclusion, but it felt like one in a way that we brought together a lot of secrets. We uncovered a lot of things and we were really just like let free. We just, we were just let off on Lock and John, Lock and John, enjoy, go. You have all of these abilities to do all these things in this world. You have given full control. This is a unique story where it doesn't matter too much. So the stakes are really low comparatively, to be fair. However, the freedom is so grand that these characters are able to do a lot of things and they're really able to, it's, it's so creative. It's so fun. It's so fun to follow these characters along. If that's the reason that you read these books, you'll like this one more. If you read it more for like the grandiose story, 
for this like a large scale endeavor, this story is not going to be your thing. But because I care about the character so much, I like that a lot. That's why I put this much higher than book two. Flowers for Algernon. Okay, so this is a book that uh, I first put on my list because of Daniel Green a long, long time ago. And uh, because I, I, I talked about uh, that man, I have to, uh, I'm legally obligated to put this clip in the video. I've seen a few people from my community um, trying to start like, you know, their own booktube things and, you know, Nervith is doing it. So this book has been on my list since then. And I've always wanted to just try it because I don't read too many just like normal novels. Um, I didn't care for it too much. I really didn't. It wasn't a big deal for me. Uh, don't get me wrong. It was definitely not like a like a bad book, but it was such a like such a non book to me. Um, maybe I mean I'll, I think it was better than Fairy Tale. Yeah, it was a little bit better than Fairy Tale, I'd say. But yeah, okay, this seems much more reasonable to me. Like Fairy Tale was just not that good, but it was just like such a such a mediocre book. Um, I can I can understand why people might enjoy this book a lot, especially if they get really into the character. For me, I didn't like the character enough. I I found him to be creative, but not. It didn't go any further than that. There was nothing more than creativity in there for me. So it's not interesting enough. Okay, and this is, uh, these are the books. This is the series, Mistborn, that I really rue uh, reviewing because I, I find it very, you're going to hear a lot more about this in the future. It's, it's very complicated, my relationship with Sanderson. I, I, to, to some degree, I have to admit this, right? It doesn't make sense if I don't admit this. To some degrees, there's a certain degree of jealousy in that I personally feel that Sanderson is such so is so like it's just so overrated it's so unbelievably overrated and there's people that i really really enjoy reading far far less famous and in my opinion way way better than sanderson that it really ticks me off but on the other hand almost everybody that i recommend sanderson to it becomes their favorite author i don't know how that works right i have no idea but i just know that if i recommend somebody sanderson it always becomes their favorite author no idea why. So if that's happening, I have to take a step back and be like, okay, maybe it's just me or maybe it's just jealousy. Maybe I'm jealous of this guy. So because of that, um, I have to put this disclaimer out here is that I am in the severe minority with Mistborn. I thought Mistborn 1 was so bad. If Actually, if you go watch my review for Mistborn 1 uh, on my channel, you'll see that I give it like a three or five star, like something like a pretty good review. And I just cannot, like reading that, watching that back, I cannot believe it because I remember specifically reading this book and thinking, wow. This is so boring. I cannot wait to get to the next bit. And because of that, I, I well, the reason that I gave it a high rating was purely because I heard everybody talking about Sanderson in a good way. I didn't want to be the one guy who didn't. And that's the reason I made the review. It was a complete lie. Half the reviews that I made before, we'll say like 2020, are lies. Everything, or let's say 2021, every almost review, every review I read before 2021 was basically a lie. Right? I barely had any independent feelings of my own. So Mistborn 1, I had a lot of problems with it. And I should have rated it way lower than I did. Maybe like a two or three star. At least, at the, at the very max, it should not have, have been a three star. Most likely a one star, because I really didn't enjoy it. Now, moving on to this book, Well of Ascension, I'm putting it down at like a D. <sighs> I find it really difficult to like honestly say that this book was any good at all. In fact, it might be worse than the Anansi Boys. The reason I finished Well of Ascension was because it was kind of required a reading. If you want to keep reading Sanderson, if you want to read Mistborn Error 2, Mistborn Error 3, Mistborn Error 4, maybe any of the Dragonsteel books in the long-term future, you kind of have to read the entire Mistborn series. And so I kind of weighed my options and I just decided I would read it. And uh, it was it was really bad. I, I could not. It was so boring. Like, I, I don't know how... I could rant about this later. I'll rant about this in the future. You, you can watch a whole video of my ranting if you care. But I couldn't believe... I, I still can't believe that anybody could even find this book slightly interesting. Nothing happened. This book is about nothing. These characters are so flat. They're so flat. They're the most generic flat characters. The story, nothing happens in the story. The story, what is even, I can't even remember what the story is about. The story is about like, it's about the Well of Ascension, but the only interesting thing is the Well of Ascension. That doesn't appear until the end. Nothing has anything to do with it until the end. I can't believe that people like the story. Like it's a character driven story about characters that are flat. These characters are nothing. I don't get it. But okay, I digress. Let's look at the third book. Now, obviously, this is one of the highest rated books in um, in uh, modern fiction, I would, or at least modern fantasy, I would argue. Uh, in fact, let's just take a look at what exactly it is, because um, it should be possible to see these things. Let's see, Mistborn 3, what is that? Um, Hero of Ages. Hero of Ages, perfect. What is the rating? Look at this, 4.51. How often do you see that? That's really, really, really rare. Like, that's super high. I, can't, I just cannot believe that. It's very, very highly rated. If you look at anybody's review, 
everybody loves it. Um, everybody loves this book. This is like such a hard book to, for people to hate, right? People people just cry in this ending. Like, I just can't. I can't believe it. I can't believe that people like this. And um, if I have to like go back to it, if I have to be honest, this book was marginally better, maybe as good as book one, which you know at best at best puts it at a C, at absolute best. Um, I would reread this again before fair I read fairy tale. Okay, so this is like a reasonable book. I I just I just didn't care about the characters. I didn't care about the lore. I, the ending was it was a good ending, but I mean not it was not incredibly creative. It wasn't creatively incredibly amazing. It wasn't cre incredibly well written. Other than creative, there wasn't much to it. So um, and that's my Mistborn rant over. Uh, generally speaking, I was not a huge fan of it, and I, I didn't enjoy it too much. So I, I don't understand the praise it gets, but I do put it down in the low seas. Next is The Clash of Kings. Uh, fantastic book. Um, okay, I, maybe I shouldn't put it in S. Okay, you know what? Because I know what's coming up in the future, I'm not going to put that in S. I'm going to leave it in A. This book was fantastic. This book was just great. It was a fantastic, um, it was a fantastic pickup from book one. Not as good as book one, but really, really good. Like, book one maybe should be a best five-star. It was a fantastic story that just continues. Like, I need to read more George R.R. Martin. But I just did not, I do not want to read this guy in audiobook because I know that I'm going to enjoy it more while reading it physically. You know, I, I just have to do this. So that seems the most likely to me. I'm just going to read the third book physically, and I'm probably going to enjoy it more than anything else in this world. So I can't wait for that. Uh, we're taking uh, Fire and Blood, which I read for the soul sake of The House of the Dragon. And um, I, like I said, uh, I, I'm going to leave uh, Clash of Clash of uh, what is it? Clash of Clans. Yeah, I'll leave Clash of Clans in in A tier because I know that there will be one in S tier. This is one of the best books I've read in my whole life. One of my best, one of the best books I've ever read ever. Unbelievably fascinating. So uh, the the series that got me into reading, well, not not reading, we'll say the series that really got me in love with fantasy was the Lord of the Rings, and I I really really love the Lord of the Rings so much so that. I realized, wow, there's more Lord of the Rings books. There's The Silmarillion. Let's read that. And I read The Silmarillion, and I was triple blown away. The Silmarillion is still, to this day, my favorite book of all time. Ungodly. Like, it just stands above everything else, and, and it just is unmatched, in my opinion. And when George R. R. Martin says he has a Silmarillion for a Clash of Clans, I realized that this could be a great book. But I, I, was, I doubted it. I thought, okay, he's just describing a similar style. Whatever. It is what it is. I read it. It is... Not as good, not as good, I'll give it that, but it is, oh my god, it's one of the closest beauties that I've seen to Silmarillion since I read Silmarillion. It is fantastic, and uh, I, it, I'm i such a sucker for, like, dynasties and, 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 like, rulers and seeing several generations and seeing the entire life of someone. George R. R. Martin has this skill for portraying characters honestly rather than you know, like Sanderson does in, in a in a very uh, shoehorned way. Like Sanderson's like, oh, I, I must make this character good or make him bad or make it a good person who does bad things or a bad person who does good things. He, he's always doing something, right? Like very obvious. Whereas any character that you take out of any Game of Thrones book or any, you know, Fire and Blood book, any of these characters, you can point to them and be like, is this a good person? Well, objectively, there is no answer to that in every case. So that's why I love it. Plus the lore. You can never figure out about the lore. Okay, so now uh, we have the Titanic five books of of of, uh, of uh, Dresden Files, and I started reading this because I was able to pick them up on audiobook, and so I've been breezing through them. And honestly, because they've been through audiobook, I've been enjoying them several times more than I ever did while reading them. While reading, they're very light, but they're very like the amount of focus that a book takes is just not worth the story. Versus the amount of focus that an audiobook takes is a hundred percent every single time worth the story. So. Yes, in terms of Justin Faust. So we look at White Knight. I actually have no idea what, what White Knight is about. So let's take a look at White Knight. We're doing this on the fly because that, it'll be funny. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on here. Yeah, I remember I remember this story being about a Cree cloak, but that's like all I got. Um, I, I have very little memory of this. And because of that, for no reason other than that, I'm just giving, I'm just going to give it like a D. Um, would I rather read this or fairy tale? I would rather read this book again, just because I remember reading it and being like, ah, this is okay. This is a meh. Um, is it better than Hero of Ages? Unlikely. Unlikely. I, I would I would put this below Hero of Ages. Um, yeah, so I, I, I have very little idea what this is about. And I remember reading this on paperback, actually. This was like very, it's a slow read, kind of a drag. 
I have very little thoughts about this book, as I do most Dresden books, actually. You might notice that whenever I review a Dresden book, I'm kind of making up a lot of stuff, and that's because I am. Um, it's very hard to review a Dresden book as an individual story rather than a series of Dresden stories. And so whenever I review a Dresden book, I'm really trying to make up like as much of a, a review as I can. And sometimes I fail, and typically I fail. If I ever made a review about White Knight, which I probably did, I probably failed pretty badly on that. Um, but regardless, people enjoy that, so I'll make them. Um, but I, I'm, I'm always aiming. Whenever I make a review for let's say white knight i'm aiming to have a book a review that is not like not a meaningless review i think it ended up that white knight was a meaningless review but my goal was not that um and i think that especially like if you look at small things or what is that small small favor let's see yeah i remember this one small favor okay small favor was actually uh, like a solid book i remember this thinking i remember thinking this is like a legit book um, I did better than Hero of Ages, even though it's not that good. Um, it would be, we'll say, say, we'll say it's right there. That's, that's, that seems very reasonable. Small Favor was a legitimately solid book, um, especially for Dresden, where it was interesting characters and an interesting villain and an inter interesting plot. It wasn't like a bunch of characters that you didn't know the name of fighting for some reason that you didn't quite understand because of some other person that you don't quite understand and because of this context you don't quite understand. The story was much more straightforward. Um, I yeah, it, it's a little bit difficult to read a book that's so complicated about so many weird things that hinges on like one sentence and then everything changes and you're like, wait, hold on, wait, I miss, I must have missed something. Go back, right? Like this doesn't do that as much. So I'm a little bit more sympathetic to this. Uh, we have changes, which fantastic book, um, a really solid book. You know what? I'll put it in the A, uh, because it was it was like it was it was. Uh, so whenever people rank Dresden books, it's it's very funny to see that changes is always number one, always, and that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty awesome because changes is obviously the best book, but it's kind of hard to say why without kind of going into the lore of Dresden. In the interest of keeping this keeping this list spoiler free, I will say that all things considered, changes is not not like obviously the best Dresden book because of its like writing or style or characterization. It is obviously the best Dresden book because of the way that it was plotted. Like it's very clear to, for, for me to see, especially after like you, you read up on how a Jim Butcher wrote the series. He wrote the series as a, as a series of novels before he wrote the individual novels, right? Like he told me, he told me specifically that this would be a series of novels about Harry Dresden where he starts here and he start end here and then he just started like filling in the plot points within the books which is like a really dumb way to do because you end up with books that are the opposite of changes you end up with books like White Knight and um, Small Favors that are just very very menial in the grand scheme of things um, regardless I, I will say that uh, for somebody who did that Jim Butcher did it exceedingly well but there's a limit to how good you can be when you do something like that changes is just the natural um, it's just the natural midpoint of the series. It's very clear to see that in terms of like just the, the tension and the it's it's essentially like the, the the twist in the middle of the Dragon Thought series. It's like a, a huge twist. Oh my god, which isn't really that huge. It's just a huge twist that allows the character to make a pretty interesting a pretty interesting metamorphosis and in a way that doesn't completely alter the series going forward. Like it's the same character going forward, but a lot of specific things have changed. Um, and I think a lot of them are not very good, but uh, for this book in particular, because Jim Butcher is given the space to change everything, uh, he does. So that's why Changes is the best. Then Ghost Story, which um, was not as good, like quite uh, quite significantly not as good. Yeah, I'll put it down there. It, it was like very noticeably not as good as Changes, and um, it's fine. Not a bad book. Once again, I, I don't have too many thoughts on this. Turncoat, I, I don't know what this is. What is Turncoat? Which book is that? Did I, did I put them in the wrong order? Oh, I did. Oops. Oh, I remember that. This is a great book. Yeah, this is very solid. This was like a very solid lead up to the, the book. Um, I would put this. Where did I put that? Turncoat is definitely like a very solid lead up. I would put that there. Yeah, it, it's a very solid lead up to Changes. Um, it, it's probably one of the better books outside of Changes, I would say. Uh, so much so that... It, it might be like if, if changes were not, was not a thing, Turncoat would probably be considered the midpoint of Dresden Files. It just has a lot of the classic Dresden moments. Um, before we go on, I, I am currently reading Cold Days, and I think it is almost as good as Changes. I would put that in a B as well, as far as so far it goes. I've, I've read about 75% of it, and I will probably finish before the end of the year. So do with that information what you will. And then the final book, Unsold by Will White. <laughs> God awful. 
god awful. Um, I didn't enjoy it whatsoever. I would e I would argue it's even worse than. <laughs> I'll put it there. I'll put it there. Um, it was really really not enjoyable. Um, the things that I value in fantasy are not at all in Unsold. Not at all. It has a very very like, it's the the characters are extremely flat. It's just like very, it's, oh, yeah. so so tropey like. If you go through books quickly, you'll love this book. If you sit with a book and really want to digest it and really love it, this book is not for you. It's very hard to love this book. It feels like a chapter of a book. It's just nothing. There's really nothing here. Um, a lot of the characters are so derivative. The things that they say are so lame. The magic system is so odd. The way that the characters react and the way that the story progresses is so weird. It's just a baffling story altogether. And it has its audience, but that audience is not me. So uh, that concludes this year's uh, fantasy. We'll say, um, what's the other book that are... Mistborn 4, as far as Mistborn 4 is concerned, it would be a high D. I, I'll put that in a high D so far, as far as, uh, you know, I'm not sure exactly what to say about that. It's a high D. So uh, that's my general... Uh, I'll try to get this out before uh, New Year's so that you can just see this list. But you can always, just so you're aware, you can always go take a look at my Goodreads in the description so that you can see this live during the year. Um, there's many books that I haven't reviewed this year, and there's many books that I will continue to review. I think um, at, at best I will read two more books during the year. So this is as good a time as any to make this review. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this year um, in books and you enjoyed all my reviews, and you know, th and thank you so much for the support. If you enjoyed all this uh, review video, all this stuff, um, please leave a like, leave a comment. Um, I I'm very thankful for all the, you know, the, the interest that I've received this year because I feel like this year has been a pretty solid year for me. And, uh, you know, even though I haven't published that many videos, a lot of my older videos have picked up a little bit. You'd be surprised how many views some of my older stuff has gotten, which is just fantastic. So thank you so much for those who have continued to support me during this year, uh, despite my uh, foolish lack of videos. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, I'll make a New Year video soon, so don't worry about that. So anyway, have a nice night because I'll see you on New Year's. Uh, adios.